we're good. Hello, yeah, good to see you. Okay, we can hear you okay. And we can also see behind the scenes the challenges on building AI applications. Well, first off, thank you for inviting me to the to the talk, and I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Uh, I'm Yuzi, currently working at Sounding Product Manager at Lipton AI, where we help uh, user and clients ship their machine learning workloads much easier. So the topic today I'm bringing over at uh, the behind the scenes, the challenge on building AI applications, where I will be sharing my personal experience on building a general AI uh, applications in the financial industries. Uh, we do have like briefly a short agenda for today, starting with the earnings age. It's a, it's an, it's a, uh, it's more like a, uh, it's actually an idea I came up with when I was working in Singapore with my co a roommate who's working in Goldman Sachs um, in terms of like investment selling and stuff like that. And after that, I'll be, um, I'll be unveiling some challenges that mess around the whole process, how I resolve them, and few takeaways. Okay, so the first in the earnings age. So imagine like. Imagine like if you're working in a Goldman Sachs on the M and A section or like a fund management, you'll be like managing tens, tons of billions of monies on, on your daily basis, and one of your daily routines is actually like paying attention to those earning costs coming out of uh, coming out of either Nasdaq or a lot of other stock exchanges. So, um, one tricky question for people working in different time zones is like, for example, if you're like a uh, fund management, a, f a portfolio manager for fund management working in Singapore and you're managing fund in US, you have to be like waking up in the middle, in the middle of the night, listening to the whole earning report and asking questions alongside with that one. Imagine how hard that could be if you're like working, you, you, pro you probably need to be working like at least like five days uh, or like 20, uh, about like 20 days per month and that could be like breaking your schedule all the time so imagine if there could be an assistant where it could be acting as a shadow cfo for the for for a portfolio of companies to answer the questions as an investor and that could be helping a lot a lot on both sides of the companies and the investors so that's like what it is so a brief not show on what it on what it looks like is like this is like the side by side comparison between ChatGPT 3.5 and a open source fine model which is earning stage. So under the exact same instruction and content, the fine tuned model on the right side, which is more detailed and pays more like CFO. As you can see, it actually can it actually could be like catching the tones of like when a CFO talks about its own products. And in terms of like speed and performance, it's like 60% faster. In this case, um, feel free to try out this demo in earning stage dot uh, and assessing it's still up and running. So the how how do how do we do it? How do I do it? Uh, the the infra under is actually quite straightforward. It's it's quite traditional. If you think about it, it's like because like nowadays everybody's talking about like how you could be querying documentations based on pre-existing files. So there would be indexing stage, retrieval stage, and generation stage, right? For the indexing stage, you basically um, input all the earning file transcripts, chunk them up into into doc into document chunks, put them into factor databases. For the retrieval stage, you will be combining the instruction. Uh, the instruction will be like you are a financial assistant. Um, you do not answer the question outside of financial questions and the context, which is related to the related to related to the user query. So we do a bit of like a distance calculation over there and. Well, it's 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 quite it's I would say it's like it's a bit of like brute force. I think I could uh, I think we could do it better, but like it was like for the demo purpose back then. So that co that got like a compressed into the whole prompt and sent over to the generation stage, which the text generation models known as LLMs will be giving the result based on the input. So that's a simplified infra in a nutshell. So, uh, the the challenge under this part, the first challenge in Within that whole process, the first, the biggest challenge is like the missing data. Even like if you're recalling back to all the earning costs, like for for example, um, a standard, a standard company, in Nasdaq, they have like about uh, four earning costs per fiscal year, and adding that up, that's still not enough data for like um, if you want to be training a if you want to be training a model, it's like quite fit into the industry. So one thing I did is to like leverage GPT four by Applying synthetic data generation with, with like complete with data ETL from earning call transcript convert that into conversational in JSON, with some with some prompt to extract the key properties based on the input, and then essentially I got my enriched data set. So that's the first challenge: the missing data and the key to do, 
the key, the way we resolved it is to apply it is to apply synthetic data generation. And the second challenge is the expense of XLM. Like, um, like if you if you think about it, like uh, on on the OpenAI pricing page, if you're if you're using ChatGPT Super Three Point Five for uh, either for like pretty standard price, it's about like coin oh oh four or point oh three percent tokens, and uh, each question could be easy to go about about like one side of tokens based on the uh, based on the context. So in this case, we also found like smaller models works even much way much better than ChatGPT due to the narrow scope because like the question is so scope so narrow you don't need to you don't we do not need a huge or a large bench model to do it. A fine tuned seven D model could be way much better than than we saw. So in terms of the inference time, it's sixty percent faster. In terms of the cost, it's sixteen times cheaper, and the quality wise, it's at least fifty percent better. So that's the second part on how we resolve the cost of LM. And here comes the third part: is more than just LM, because like if you actually, if we're like actually building an application out of uh, language models, it's more than just it's like. If when when we are the, when you are like shipping this application to the end users, the analysts would like to see something that's like more fit into their needs, which means they want something in real time, and and the uh, the number being predicted by the models need to be able to get um get amount of uh, get amount get amount of like reference on where does that does that does that number come from. So it's gonna be actually leveraging both LM and a lot of other models, including models such as like ASR models, WhisperX, conventional prediction models, including LSTM, et cetera, and summarization models for finance, specifically in the financial industry. So that's a, that's a third challenge. It's more than simply just LM. And what we did uh, back at, uh, uh, what we did at, 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 at Lepton AI, is we actually made a made an open source tool where which it helps you to like prototype your A applications by converting any hugging face models into a services within one line of code. Um, basically you just do lip full run of the and passing through the the string of the hugging face model and you can create a machine learning service out of it and you will be able to consume it right away instead of instead of having a dedicated dev box to do it. So that would be that. That's like the three biggest challenges I encountered through the whole process. And here, if you take away the first thing is like finding a good scope of the problem matters way much more than simply using any models. The more narrow scape, the better performance in terms of both quality and speed. The second part is like work smart with OpenAI and ChatGPT, for example, leveraging leveraging the synthetic data generation techniques. And the third part on um, working with OM is to ask it for format but not the content. Leave the content blank for like conventional models because like especially in the finance industry you need to be asking for the reference and and interoperability of the models so these are the brief um introduction and um and my walkthroughs and takeaways on my experience on building this uh, financial application and um that'd be it thank you very much and right on time too can you scroll to just the last slide just that or say conventional models you do you mean like non-deep learning ones kind of like yeah exactly so like yeah exactly in terms of like a financial industry if you want to be predicting the pricing of the stocks which is used all the time in the uh, in the high frequency trading you'll be using more well well i guess it depends it, like you could be using rn or reinforcement le based learning rather than transformative models or or for like fund management they'll be more likely to use like lstm or linear models yeah, yeah. Because they because they need the, they need to have the uh, interpretability of the model to explain to their investors to their LPs like why we're putting money into into this company into this portfolio company or into this industry specifically. Yeah, yeah. And I imagine that like depending on the branch within finance, I think like in, in, in some of banking, it also gets quite highly regulated. So the entire exactly. is like a, is mandatory there. Uh, thank yeah. you very much. Thank you for coming and for sharing your insights with us. 